here at Wormbase, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the third webinar in the 2020 Wormbase webinar series. Um, in today's webinar, my colleague Scott Kane will be uh, giving an overview of JBrowse, the genome browsing tool in Wormbase. Uh, a couple of things to note before we begin. The presentation itself will take about 35 to 40 minutes, followed by a 20 minute Q&A session. Uh, note that we will be muting all of you participants during the presentation. This is just so that you know everything can go smoothly. Uh, you may type questions into the chat panel during the presentation and our chat moderator, Daniela Ricciti will be collecting all the questions and we will uh, try to answer them all um, at the very end in the Q&A session. Um, note that the webinar, including the Q&A, will be recorded and we'll post this at a later date and we'll inform you through our blog. Um, as always, if you feel that your questions um, didn't get answered sufficiently or you have further clarification that you need, please contact us at the email help at wormbase.org. Again, it's help at wormbase.org. Um, um, thank you again for joining us. We're really pleased that you're all here. Um, so Scott, are you ready to start? The screen is all yours. Very good, thank you. Um, all right, so uh, hopefully everybody can see my screen. Um, I think maybe I will stop sharing my video just to make sure I don't have any bandwidth issues. So nobody wants to see my face anyway, okay. Um, very good. So yeah, so I'm going to be talking about JBrowse. Um, uh, so I'll just start with my, my slides. I have actually very few slides because this is going to be uh, predominantly a live demo. Um, so uh, as uh, Ranjana said, uh, my name is Scott Kane. I am a developer. Uh, my office is based at OICR in Toronto. Uh, but I actually live in San Diego right now. Um, I have been a developer for uh, Wormbase for, I think, in the ballpark of four years. I don't remember exactly. Uh, but I've been working in genome browsers for nearly 20 years. Um, so like I said, uh, most of this talk is going to be interactive. And I've created some slides to kind of keep track of what I'm doing. And so those can be shared later as well. Uh, but they're just, they're, they're, there's not much on them. This is basically just notes for me to, for things to do. But before I go into that, I just want to spend just a minute or two talking about how JBrowse is different from other genome browsers. So the uh, right now, the default genome browser for Wormbase is JBrowse. Um, before that, um, and still supported by Wormbase, is another genome browser called GBrowse. Um, and that was the genome browser since, I don't know, 1999 or something like that. Um, and uh, so the difference between JBrowse and just about every other genome browser, including GBrowse or the UCSC genome browser or the Ensemble genome browser, the thing that is different about JBrowse is that it is written entirely in JavaScript. And so why do you care that it's written in JavaScript? Well, what it does is it runs entirely inside the uh, your web browser. So when you click on a JBrowse link, it downloads some JavaScript that runs inside your browser and then gets a tiny bit of text data from a server that then the web browser uses to, um, to draw a picture. So why is that better? So generally, it's very fast. Um, it will, it will, um, draw an image much faster than say GBrowse would. Um, and another thing that is really nice about it is that it can, um, you can visualize your own data without having to upload it anywhere. And I'll show you uh, why that, uh, how that works in a little bit, but that's as opposed to something like GBrowse where you say, oh, well, I have this uh, one gigabyte BAM file and I'd like to visualize it. Well, now I have to hit upload and it will send it to a server somewhere that'll take a while to upload and then then you can generate a picture. With this, it's just like, show me this picture and it shows you a second or two later. This, the disadvantages to, um, 
to uh, having this JavaScript based web browser, uh, and there are a few, is that sharing like personal data, like that stuff that you can visualize very quickly without uploading it, it can be a little bit harder than sharing something in something with uh, like in GBrowse where you can just upload it and then send somebody a link. It's a little bit harder, but it can still be done. Um, and the other thing that is uh, kind of a not obvious downside is that um, tracks that you add on your own don't survive a page refresh. So if I'm looking at GBrowse and I'm like, oh, this isn't, or JBrowse and this isn't working the way I want it to. Uh, and I've got 10 tracks that I created of my own data. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm just gonna reload it and see what happens. Well, it'll wipe out those 10 tracks, which is kind of a drag. However, that's going to be fixed in JBrowse 2, which actually just got released last week. So eventually at some point we'll be transitioning to JBrowse 2, not in the next couple of months though, maybe end of 2021. Anyway, okay. Um, and the other thing that I just want to mention uh, about kind of how JBrowse works is that all of the data that drives JBrowse is in a public, publicly available um, Amazon Web Services S3 bucket, which means that uh, if you wanted to, you could create your own JBrowse instance uh, and pull data from uh, from the S3 and you would never have to go to WormBase's JBrowse, you could use your own. I, I don't think that's a great idea because I'd like you to come to WormBase. But uh, if you wanted to create some sort of special system uh, for your own, uh, you could do that. And, and if, you're, if that's something you're interested in doing, uh, by all means, uh, you can contact me and I can help you figure out how to best go about doing it. So now we're gonna go on to um, using, let's see, can I move this thing? Yes, okay, the, the, the zoom bar was in my way. Okay, so uh, switching over to another tab. So here's the Wormbase webpage. How do you get to JBrowse? If you don't already know, there is this drop down menu at tools and you can slide down here and click on JBrowse. That is one way to get there. That works perfectly well. Uh, I would say perhaps a more common way would be to search for you know, whatever it is you're interested in. In this case, I'll just pick a gene, uh, UNC9, and that's fine. And UNC9 loads, and down here, I get this little uh, kind of uh, window screenshot thing uh, of JBrowse. And if I click on this, or if I click on this one down here that's in the sequence features widget, this one's called the location widget. If I click on either of those, they'll open a new JBrowse window. So that's, uh, that's what I'm gonna do. I'll click on that. And that will give me a new uh, JBrowse window. So it'll download, like I said, it'll download that JavaScript I was talking about and then generate a picture really quickly. Okay, so uh, let's get started with how you use JBrowse. So the easiest, the, the things I'm gonna start with are really kind of the, the most kind of foundational. Um, and that's, uh, you know, like searching and navigation, things like that. Kind of the most common thing to do when you want to search is to look in this box here. Um, this is this is like a, a little search bar. Uh, by default, it shows the location, the coordinates where you are, and the size. But you can type anything in here that you want, and you'll get uh, tab completion as well. So, for instance, uh, I look for UNC9, and if I start typing UNC, it'll start giving me options for all of the different uh, UNC genes, and so I can type you know, UNC9, and then it still gives me all the options and I can just select from one of these. And if I select the same one, there you go. And it, what it does uh, when, uh, when I select something is it will put actually the track that it's in at the, at the top of the display. So that's nice as well. Um, the, uh, um, the next thing you can do is for zooming in and out, there are multiple ways to zoom in and out as well. Kind of the most common thing to do again would be to uh, use your mouse to select along this rule, ruler on the top of the page. And when I let go of that, it automatically zooms in. And again, notice how quickly it zooms in. Um, if I wanna zoom out, there's ways to zoom out as well. Kind of the most, the thing that I do most often is hit one of these magnifying glass icons up here. The little one zooms out a little bit. The big one zooms out a lot. And the same is true for the, the plus zoom. The little one zooms in a little bit, the big one zooms in a lot. Another thing I can do for, uh, as well is if I double click anywhere inside of this, uh, the, the panel that shows the actual features, if I double click, that zooms in. And if I hold down the shift key and double click, that zooms out. Okay. 
Another thing with searching that I think a lot of people are probably not aware of is underneath this view menu up here is um, this search features option. And it works kind of similarly to the drop down box, but there's a few things that it does that are nice. One, uh, again, if I just start typing like the name of a gene, uh, it starts giving me a list. One, one thing that's nice is now this is a kind of a scrollable list. I, I think the, the number of results it gives is limited to 20. I think that's why, because I'm pretty sure there's more than 20 on genes. But anyway, um, it, it gives me 20, uh, 20 options and it has two buttons over here. The go button just does what you kind of would expect is take me to that place and, and I'm just gonna go on from there. The show button on the other hand will load that area, that region kind of in the background and I can move this out of the way and then see, okay, that's what it was. And then I can hit another one. And so it leaves this, it leaves this search list open so that I can kind of like look around to see, is this what I was really looking for? So anyway. Uh, so anyway, so there we are back at, um, uh, back at UNC9. Uh, another thing that I would just like to talk about a little bit is identifying what the um, what colors and shapes generally mean, and 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 what I mean by that is kind of like how how do you know the fact that this is a diamond uh, does that mean anything? And the fact that it's filled in white, I think it's white. Oh no, it's yellow. The fact that it's filled in yellow does that mean anything? So each one of these track labels, you know, that tells you what the track is. Each one of these has when you mouse over it a little. Uh, down triangle here that indicates there's a menu there. So if I click on that, uh, I get several options. A few of these I'm gonna talk about uh, later. Well, actually just one, but uh, the save track data. But the one that I wanted to mention right now is this about this track option where it, sh it uh, brings up basically just a little bit of information about the track. And usually it says, um, usually it says what the, the um, what the colors and shapes mean. So yellow diamonds represent substitutions. There you go. Um, and so most of the tracks have things like that, at least when it makes, you know, when you want to know when it, there's a reason you might want to have that. So this one, uh, let's see, it says uh, gray transcripts represent non-coding transcripts and um, uh, uh, dark purple areas represent the five prime and three prime uh, and purple and blue indicate strand. Okay, so that's great. So that's good. For a second there, I thought maybe I didn't have the description of what the colors meant in that track and I was gonna feel bad about that. But uh, thankfully that didn't happen. Um, one of the other things you may notice uh, is that sometimes these track labels, while they provide function, you know, they tell you what you're looking at, they give you this menu, they also can get in the way of stuff that's underneath it. And so like here, I can't see what's under here. Uh, so my options are either kind of scroll over right now I can see it, but if for whatever reason you would like to get rid of those, there is this button right here um, that is kind of tiny. It's kind of hard to tell what that is, um, but what it does is makes those track labels slide off if they're in the way so that you can bring them back, make them go away. So that's great. Okay. Um, now the next thing I would say that people uh, used to ask most commonly, how do I get sequence data from JBrowse? So, so in GBrowse, that used to be really, really obvious. You know, you could write, you could maybe, I think it was, if you right clicked on a, on a glyph, you could get the sequence of it, you know, things like that. Or if you highlighted something, uh, that would pop up a menu and show you. So JBrowse is a little bit different. And uh, so it's not as obvious. I don't get as many questions about that as I used to because I did add over here on the left this, uh, this little link that says, want to download fast day? Um, so basically what I'm going to do is tell you what's in that link so you don't have to follow that link anymore. OK, so um, uh, oh, actually, I was going to do something else before I, I, we talk about getting uh, DNA sequence. Okay. Uh, so actually, uh, what I wanted to talk about is searching for sequences, you know, so like actual sequences. So um, say I want to find, I don't know, uh, there is a, um, okay, uh, 
full uh, full disclosure time, I'm not actually a biologist, uh, even though I sometimes play one. Uh, I'm also not a software developer, I'm an engineer. But anyway, I've done a lot of biology stuff in the, like I said, the past 25 or 30 years. So anyway, uh, sometimes my memory fails me about DNA sequences, like what is the signal for um, poly A adenylation called? That's that, um, I believe that sequence though, I think I know what it is. So I'm going to do this uh, under the file menu. I'm going to say, I want to add a sequence search track because I want to, I'm, this will create a track that looks for sequence that I'm interested in. So my rec recollection is that uh, polyadenylation signal is TA, TAA. So if I hit that and what it does then is create this track down here that is basically all of the, all of the TA, TAA sequences that are in the screen that I'm looking at. And this will stick around and it will keep searching for it um, as long as it's open. So I, I could navigate to anywhere else and that track can, will stay open. And also what it does is create an entry for it over here that I can turn on and off. So I can, I can turn it off and I can turn it back on. But like I mentioned before, if I reload this page, that little checkbox will go away and this track will go away. So just so you know, okay. So that's great. That let me, lets me look for those uh, signals. So I, I don't know, let's see, at the end of this, uh, uh, I don't see one close to the end of this, uh, this transcript up. Oh, I'm looking in the wrong end of the transcript. <laughs> those arrows are there for a reason. Um, so yeah, there, there are a few there at the end of the, at the end of the, uh, those transcripts. So that's good, it makes sense. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, the other thing that this sequence search track can do uh, is um, it can search for things that are called regular expressions, uh, which is basically kind of like a kind of smart wildcard searching. So if I just pick a random sequence, A, T, uh, A, G, T, C, and then say at the end of that, I would like to find either an A or a T, I can put it inside these little square brackets. And that means find either an A or T, as long as I check this button, treat as a regular expression. So now if I search for that, I have a feeling it's going to be, oh, it's not super common. That's good. Um, so anyway, so if I, if I click on one of these, it will show me that sequence is A, G, T, C. And then this one has an A on the end. And then if I click on another one, uh, that one has a T on the end. I absolutely did not know that was going to happen. That was just very convenient for the demo that it happened to be. The first one I clicked on had one option and the second one had another option. So anyway, you can see this is actually a really powerful search technique that might make it useful. You might think it might make it useful for looking for things like um, uh, like binding domains, that sort of thing where you can kind of have some, some wobble. Um, in a, Another thing that would make it look, uh, make it useful for looking for domains like that is another track that uh, actually I wrote for JBrowse um, for specifically for use at WormBase, but other people can use it if they want, um, is a track that does uh, position weight matrix searching. So if I click on this one, basically what this does is load up this dialog box that has a list of a bunch of motifs. Um, and I can pick one of these if I want to look to see what motifs are nearby, or I can also um, put in a my own position weight matrix, uh, basically numbers separated by spaces here. Okay, so if I just pick one, um, let's see what's what, what what is one that I, I'm usually pretty uh, usually find pretty easily. I think uh, Mab three I think has a lot of. Uh, uh, has a lot of those. And then down at the bottom, I can put in how tight, uh, how well do I want it to match the, the matrix. Here, I'm going to say a kind of a relative score of 90%. And then I'll say search. Um, I'm going to close these two to get rid of them. Uh, oh, let's see if I zoom out a little bit, hopefully I'll find one. There we go. So there are a few. Um, and so again, if I click on it, it tells me the exact sequence and the location actually. So that's, that's actually pretty useful too. It gives me the, the coordinates of the thing that it found and the exact sequence of the thing it found if I click on it. So that's pretty nice. Um, and then one other thing uh, that I just wanna mention for, uh, uh, for people that might be interested in it is again, I didn't even point out that I didn't talk yet about the, the track selection thing on the left here. Uh, but just in terms of looking for sequence, one thing I just want to mention is there's also this track, this CRISPR-Cas9 um, uh, prediction track 
uh, let's see if I zoom back in because it's it's very it's a pretty dense track. There are a lot of predictions here, um, and each one of these is uh, has a mouse over where I can mouse over the features, and it'll give me details from the prediction. Um, and if I look at the about this, um, it gives me the link uh, the the link back to where this data came from. Okay. Um, okay, but I just wanted to mention that was there. It's there are a lot of people probably might find that useful. Okay. Um, now, back to the thing that I started a, a couple of minutes ago, which was um, getting sequence. So a lot of times people want sequence. Um, there are multiple ways in JBrowse to get it, depending on uh, both what kind of feature it is and what you want to do with this, the, the, uh, the sequence. If I uh, either right click or on a Mac, if I control click on something that's like a gene or a transcript, um, I'll get this menu and the, the bot, the option at the bottom is view sequence. Okay. So if I select that, there we go. I have to select which transcript I'm interested in. So I'll go ahead and select one. And then it gives me this display where uh, it gives me the whole sequence. Now, before I go into this, this display, uh, I didn't write it. I'm using it from, you know, somebody else wrote this as kind of a plugin for JBrowse. It does occasionally have problems at WormBase. Um, so basically anything you get from this, this sequence is definitely correct, but sometimes it will get things wrong. If I say highlight the CDSs, that pretty much is it always does correctly. Um, but sometimes there are certain combinations of things that will result in something that's not correct. So please, if you're using this display, make sure you double check that the sequence you get is actually what you expect it to be. Um, so anyway, now that I've got the, the disclaimer out of the way, um, it is what it does is really nice. Basically, I can highlight things and it will highlight them in different colors. Um, so uh, that's not a great color for that highlight, but it sort of highlights the five prime UTR. And it basically depends on how things are annotated. So if I, uh, in worm base, we highlight uh, most of the UTRs are annotated either as five prime or three prime UTRs. So that's why when I clicked this uh, UTRs button, nothing happened. But when I clicked the five prime UTRs, it did light them up. Oh, the purple's better than the green. That's nice. Okay. Uh, and there are other things you can do too. So for instance, I could uh, lowercase all the introns. That's nice. Um, or I could just hide all of the introns. And then what I get is kind of a, an in silico uh, uh, mRNA processing. So basically I spliced out all the introns and now I've got one continuous uh, coding region with a uh, five prime and a three prime UTR. Uh, and so I can copy, uh, I can select all of this and copy it. Um, oh, actually, before I do that, another thing that people frequently want is say, I'd like to get uh, 2000 base pairs upstream. So I can do that. And then it makes this you know, longer. And I've got those 2000 base pairs upstream of of, of this gene. And so that's, that's pretty useful too. Um, so anyway, so I can select all of this and I can copy it into uh, like a text editing tool and, um, and then do what I want with it. And most of the time, or at least for some browsers, this is kind of, seems to be like a browser specific thing. Uh, so for instance, Firefox, I think does this particularly well. If you're using Firefox, it will uh, maintain like the highlighting and stuff uh, if you want to copy it into something like Word or, or Google Docs, uh, it will maintain all the highlighting that you've done while you're here. So if, you, if that is something that would be useful for you, that's, uh, I think that's pretty neat. So anyway, so that's one way to get sequence. Um, another way to get sequence is, works for basically any feature type. So like, so like these, um, uh, these phosmids and cos cosmids down here, if I uh, again, either right click or control click on one of them, I get this, this menu again. You'll note that the, the fourth thing on the, on the list isn't here, but the third, th the, the thing at the top here, this view details, this is available and it gives me this kind of, uh, this, this little information box that basically tells me everything that uh, JBrowse knows about this feature. You know, the name of the feature, what type of thing it is, position length, all that stuff. And it also gives me this little dialog down here where it has the whole sequence. Um, the only time this kind of falls down is if the sequence, I think it's over 250 uh, kilobases 
uh, this won't display just because it'll just it'll slow down your browser because it's a lot of text to put into a little dialog box. Um, but for every other sort sort of feature that it will work. Okay. Um, so that's uh, another way to find features. And then a third way to find feature to find a sequence, excuse me, another third way to find sequence is to open the reference sequence uh, track, this uh, reference sequence DNA track here. And right now it shows me this gray box that says, uh, I can't see individual sequence, but it's under there. Um, and actually we don't need to be able to see it to do this, uh, to use this method of getting DNA sequence. We can, um, use this option here called save track data. And this save track data is available for, I think every track, certainly uh, most of them, there might be kind of a, sp a specific type of track that maybe it's not available for, but I think it's available all the time, um, is this save track data. And if I select it for the DNA track, um, it gives me this message, this little dialog box. It says uh, you can download basically the visible region. So basically if I wanna get the DNA sequence for everything that I'm looking at right now, uh, I can just hit save and it'll download that as, um, as a FASTA file onto my computer or it'll open it as a, in a dialog box like that. Um, and then also give me the little save button at the bottom. Um, and then finally, one other option for getting sequence um, is again, this is something I don't think people are that aware of very often. Again, if I right click or control click on any feature and I select highlight this gene, that actually does two things for me. One, it gives me a highlight. So it says, oh yeah, this is the thing so that it can show me boundaries basically extended all the way through the page. But then if I come back here to this, um, the DNA track and I select save track data again, there's another option here in addition to the visible region is to download, to give me the sequence of just the highlighted region. And so I can view that and it's actually really short because that thing I clicked on is a very small, uh, non-coding uh, transcript of some sort. So it gives me that sequence. And again, I could, I could copy and paste this or I could hit save and it'll download it as a FASTA file. Okay. Uh, if you wanna get rid of that highlighting, which I do right now, um, I can click this, uh, this, this little button here that's right next to the hide track labels button that has the red X and the red X means click it to get rid of it. And now it's gone. Okay. Okay. Um, Let's see. So now I want to talk a little bit about using um, mod and code data. Um, so mod and code is the, this uh, kind of giant multi um, or, um, multi organization um, experiment that generated an enormous amount of data, and we have that data in uh, JBrowse. Um, and so normally, when I've got my JBrowse instance open, I've got these mod and code tracks closed because there's 529 of them. So I generally, I generally like to have it closed. So you can close any one of these sections by clicking on the triangle. So if it's something you don't use. Um, you can just close them and then it makes, it makes this much smaller. Um, so one of the problems with having 529 tracks is it's not always easy to find the one you're looking for. Um, but what is nice is up at the top here of the available tracks, um, list is that um, I can filter the tracks. So, so say um, I wanted to look for a binding, uh, a binding region for um, something with MAB in it. It is not MAB3, um, it's something else. I can't remember, but what, I can, what, what is nice is when I do that filter on the side here, it went to zero for all of these because, and what it's telling you is there are no tracks that have that, that word in them in this section. And as I scroll down, it stays zero, 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 except for here in the modern code tracks, it says they're five. So if I bring this back open, um, it opens up automatically for me the ones where those five exist so that I can say, oh, well here, here it is, it's MAB5. Um, and so that's pretty nice. So I can turn on these. Um, actually, one thing I just wanna point out real quickly is that um, some of these modern code tracks have W peaks at the end of them, that's with peaks. Uh, so basically some of them had a peak caller run on them, some did not. Uh, all of the ones that I have to be looking at right now had that peak caller ran. So I'm gonna open those up and say, so here you go, here they are. I'm actually, to move these, you can also rearrange tracks by clicking on the label and dragging them. So I'm gonna drag these up. Okay. So 
uh, get rid of the DNA track too. So there we go. So this, this uh, track then has, um, uh, we can see that it has a peak color that's been run on it. These, these little pink highlighted regions are where peaks have been called by some algorithm. I actually don't know that much about, I don't really know anything about the algorithm that called those peaks. Um, but there's an example of it. Um, another one I would like to, so, so this is uh, maybe a different one. Um, no, actually, I'm going to come back to that. Uh, so anyway, things that are useful about this is one, I can, um, each one of these peaks uh, are clickable. Uh, so I can click on it and I can get the sequence of that called peak just like I could in any other feature. Anywhere else, when I like, um, if I click anywhere else in the, in the graph, it doesn't really do anything. It's only when I, I'm over a peak that I can get that. But otherwise, if I'm mousing over, it'll show me the, the scores if those are useful, uh, useful to you. Um, okay, um, let's see. Oh, uh, the, yeah, I guess the reason I had this one open is uh, just to, just to, sh to show that you know these these binding regions. Um, uh, maybe I don't. No, I don't know. I don't know what I was going to do with that. Doesn't matter. Okay. Um, and then uh, one other thing with regards to modern code. Oh, actually, before I do that, uh, the, this filtering, you can get rid of the filter by clicking that and then it goes away. And then I get everything, all, all the tracks back. Um, and then one other thing I want to mention about modern code data is there were actually two big sets of data from that. One was published in 2014, which is why if I come down here, it says modern code data uh, 2014. Uh, there was also an earlier set of modern code data, um, and it is sufficiently old that it is mapped to an older assembly of C. elegans. So if you want to see that older modern code data, you can click on this link and it will open it up and it would be mapped to the older assembly um, and uh, we'll give you the data for that. One of the things that I would point, about, point out about that is that it doesn't have gene names like unc9 in, in the features. Um, but it does have the sequence name uh, of all the features. And so what I would suggest is if you want to look at a particular region in that modern code data would be to get the sequence, uh, the sequence name of UNC9, which in, is in parentheses here. It's this R12H7.1. I'm just going to open this up so that I can copy it. Just so I can sure copy it. That's what I'm going to do. Here, I'll try up here. OK. OK. And now if I click on this uh, looking for older modern code data link, it will open up a new JBrow. Well, it actually will use the same window. And um, now if in this location bar, if I type gene colon and then that sequence name, there we go. This is on nine. And now any of, the tr any of these tracks that I, you know, if I wanted to open up any of them, uh, I have no idea. Yeah, so I can see data relative. So basically, the point is, is because the assembly is different, I don't know if the coordinates don't necessarily map between them. But I do know that this is UNC9. So that this gives me the, the view of the region around UNC9 uh, for these uh, modern code data. So that's, uh, that's what I wanted to show you with that. OK. Um, let's see. OK. So moving on, there we go, uh, expression data. Um, another thing I just want to point out, this is um, the data that we have uh, in JBrowse that it, it, uh, is, uh, has expression data, is, there's a whole, whole section of them here. A couple of things I would like to point out is um, we do have this track called expression patterns. I might have to zoom out to find one, there we go. Um, and if I mouse over them, I get this cute little uh, cartoon that shows me, you know, where this is expressed in Worm. And if I click on it, uh, I will get this kind of window inside of WormBase, uh, window to WormBase kind of inside of JBrowse that takes me to that page uh, to just, you know, that describes what that, uh, that expression pattern looks like. Also, this little kind of window in a window thing is available for most of the features in WormBase. If I click on a gene, I would get something similar. I would get a gene page. And if I wanted to put that out into its own tab, I can click on this thing at the top of it, and then that would open it up in its own tab. So again, like I said, if I click on, um, if I click on a gene, why is it not working? 
Uh, my mouse is freaking out. Okay. Um, there, it does the same thing where it opens up that gene page. And I could click on that link and it would open up in its own tab. Um, another thing I would like to point out about expression uh, is that relatively new, I think this has been around uh, a year or so, is um, there, there is still a track that is quite old that was in GBrowse that called RNA-seq introns, which is basically this track, uh, I'm going to see it, we're going to have to zoom in a little bit. Okay, uh, this track is basically all of the predicted introns from all of the RNA-seq data that the worm that we have at WormBase. Um, I don't find this display particularly useful. Uh, basically, the height of it uh, relates to how common it is, how common that intron is. What I like much better is this one, where I've got two tracks that show me predicted introns that are either common or more rare. So in um, in the N2 uh, in C. elegans N2 strain, um, common means more than 500 uh, RNA seq uh, uh, sequences support the existence of this intron. So we can see up here for UNC9, let me zoom out just a little bit so we can see the whole gene. So we can see here for UNC9, there's basically one set of introns that are very commonly uh, seen. Um, the color of these, um, the kind of the deepness of the color is proportional to how many of the things there are. So if I mouse over this one, it says this intron is supported by um, uh, 84, uh, 8466 reads. Uh, but these other ones, if I mouse over them, they're supported by 10,000 more or 10 times more reads. So these introns are much more common this, than this intron. Um, and then if we want to see more, uh, more rare introns, we've got this one where again, the height is somewhat proportional to the number of uh, sequences supporting it. So this one's kind of thick, it's supported by 68 reads, that's not very common. Um, but the thin ones, yeah, see that one's supported by eight. Uh, and they're colored the same way as genes are. So um, the, the pinks and purples are on the forward strand and then the blues are on the uh, reverse strand. So we can see there's a mix of uh, directionality here. Uh, that's probably not very meaningful, particularly because they're rare. But anyway, uh, I thought that's, that's a pretty useful thing. Uh, I'm going to wrap up real fast. I just want to very quickly show some examples of how you can load your own data. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is um, under this file menu, there's this open track file or URL. Basically, you can load either URLs or files. Um, first of all, I created a new transcript um, for UNC9. Basically, I just uh, edited the, the uh, GFF and deleted an intron. And so that loaded this new one here. Um, I don't know what, what, oh yeah, this intron here I deleted. So there you go. Uh, so that's uh, loading GFF. Obviously that was really fast, but GFF, they're pretty small. Um, on the other hand, if I wanna load something big, uh, I can load things like BAM or CRAM files. So uh, I just got this uh, data from uh, our Wormbase folks in e at, uh, at EBI. I appreciate that. And I have to click both the, uh, for CRAM and BAM, uh, it, there's, a, there's a CRAM file and then there's an index file. And I have to click on both of them. And uh, there we go, we open both of them and it automatically figures out, okay, this is uh, a new alignment track. So I open that up and that file is pretty big. I think it's, uh, I don't remember how big it is, but maybe not quite a giga, gigabase, but it's, it's big. Um, so that loaded pretty darn fast. Uh, I can zoom in. And if I zoom in enough, we'll be able to see like uh, mismatches yeah, see, so it highlights where mismatches are in the sequence in the alignments. So that's pretty neat. Um, let's see, other things that I can load. Uh, JBrowse will automatically let you load things like, um, uh, you can do URLs, that's what I wanted to say. And if I come here and say, pick a bigwig file, which is kind of a, an XY plot sort of thing, and paste the URL for it in here and say open and zoom out so you can actually see the plot. There we go. So it'll load a bigwig file. You can also load things like VCF files that have uh, variants. So uh, let me get for that. Again, you have to load both the VCF file and its index. Um, 
So I'm going to type that in there. That's the VCF file. And this is the index file. And again, it automatically recognizes, okay, this is a, this is a, this is variant data. Um, and in this region, there's just one example of that. And I can click on it and it gives me all of the information that comes out of that, that VCF file. I should mention that this VCF file is hosted at the Alliance for Genome Resources. And I just copied the URL from where it is and uh, put it in here for opening it in my own, you know, opening my own kind of local track for it. Um, other things that I didn't show you, it also supports big bed and uh, big wig. Um, and I should mention that if you have other, other formats, one thing you might want to look at is a, a software tool called Galaxy that will uh, let you kind of import your data and do data transformations on it to say, take a, a bed file and turn it into a big bed file. It'll do that. You can do that sort of thing or take a wiggle file and turn it into a big wig. Uh, so that is, uh, that's pretty useful as well. Um, oh gosh, one more. I, I realize I am running very low on time. Uh, one last example that I wanted to show um, Actually, there's more things I wanted to show, but I'll, I'll do this. Is um, it's kind of a neat thing, uh, but unfortunately, I don't know of any good examples of what to do with it at uh, Wormbase. But maybe somebody out there, I want to throw it out there so that if anybody thinks of something that's useful, let me know. So instead, I'm going to show you this uh, JBrowse instance for um, SARS-CoV-2, uh, the COVID-19 uh, virus genome. Basically. This tool called Combination Tracks that you may have seen here, Add Combination Track, uh, is a neat thing that lets you combine two tracks and it will do operations on it and show you kind of the result of that operation. So for instance, I've got these two tracks here that show uh, uh, variants from uh, the, the, the RefSeq uh, for um, SARS-CoV-2 in two different individuals. And I'd like to say, well, show me uh, either the variants that these have in common or the variants that are different. Um, and I can do that by saying, open a combination track. And I'm going to drag one of them into this. Okay. And then I'm going to drag the other one into this. And now it pops up this menu. It says, okay, what do you want me to do to compare these two tracks? So I can either find the things, the intersection of things that are in common. Um, I can find an XOR, uh, which is uh, things that are only in one track or the other. Um, or I can say, uh, just subtract all the things that are in one track and show me what's left. Um, so if I do that, uh, let's see. Yeah, so here we go. So like for instance, this one, this variant here is only in this track and not in this track. Um, one thing that I should mention that this does not let you do is compare quanti uh, quantitative data like uh, uh, it, you'd get in a big wig um, because it's hard. It, and there's a functional reason for that. It would be hard to say, how do I know that the, the scales of these are the same? And so subtracting would be difficult to do in a logical way. Um, let's see, one honestly very last thing is taking screenshots. Uh, JBrowse, uh, you can obviously take a screenshot you know, using your operating system's normal way of doing that. Um, the other thing you can do is click on the screenshot button up here in the upper right. Uh, and say, okay, I want to turn off, you know, like the thing on the right and the, the thing on the top. Uh, I'll leave track, la track labels on. You can do PNGs, JPEGs, or PDFs. And one thing you might want to do if you want to get like a higher resolution is you can bump up the zoom factor. But if you're going to do that, you know, maybe make this bigger. Because um, uh, basically it's, it's, it's literally going to zoom in. Uh, when you hit go. Um, and so sometimes if you're doing screenshots this way, you might have to spend a little bit of time uh, kind of wiggling how, to, how, how, how much you want to zoom in versus how wide you want the display. And it'll take a, a minute or two. It basically sends it off to a third party service that will generate the image and give me one back. Um, what JBrowse does not support is making SVGs. GBrowse still does do, do that. And that's one of the reasons we still have GBrowse around. Um, also, JBrowse 2 will do SVGs. And again, I'll probably have that implemented by the, implemented by the end of next year. Um, uh, let's see. So while I'm waiting for this, um, I don't think there's anything else that I necessarily really wanted to do. So uh, yeah, so there's that. Uh, and this is actually not as big as it is. If, this is the kind of actual representation of how, how zoomed in that is. That's a fairly high resolution image. Okay. All right. So 
I'm going to turn it over to questions. Um, so Daniela, you want to you want to start uh, you want to start peppering me with questions? I haven't I haven't been paying paying attention to the chat box, so hopefully there's some questions in there. Okay, great. Thank you, Scott, for the excellent overview of JBrowse. Uh, we received a couple of questions in the chat. We will start with, with those, but please continue to type in questions as we go. So the first question was from Jin Tao. Jin Tao, you had a question about finding DNA data or FASTA data of a selected region, and if you can download it. It seems that Scott already covered it during the presentation, and also Adam Wright, a worm-based developer, answered in the chat. Uh, Jin Tao, is there anything else um, uh, that you wanted to know? Did that answer your question? You can type yes or no in the chat. Okay, great, perfect. Uh, Jin Tao says it's answered. Um, then uh, Matthew Aldock uh, had a question regarding uh, loading uh, C. elegans natural diversity resource data, asking if it was possible, and then saw it uh, on the left hand side. I'm bringing this up only for the entire audience. So the answer is yes. Yeah. You can see that. And now to you, uh, Scott. So Venkata Krishna is asking if non coding RNA sequences can be searched through JBrowse. Can, oh, uh, so, so if you have the like the sequence of something, I think that's what that's asking. If, if I have sequence, can I look for the sequence? Venkata, is this what you're asking? You can type in the chat. Are you asking if non-coding RNA sequences, the sequence itself can be searched through JBrowse? Yeah, so she's asking about how to search a non-coding sequence. Okay, so uh, in JBrowse, you can't really do that. However, WormBase uh, does provide like BLAST and BLAT. Um, I don't know if anybody's gonna, if there's going to be a webinar on that specifically. Um, let's see if I, I need a window that has WormBase in it. Okay. Um, and of course, I don't have any sequence handy to, to search with, although I could get some from JBrowse, I guess. Um, but if I do search for a sequence here, let me, let, me just, let me just get some sequence real fast. Okay. Okay. And so if I say I have, that's the sequence of the thing that I'm interested in looking at, uh, I can search either with BLAST um, or, uh, or BLAT. Um, oh, well, yeah, I could, oh, I didn't mean to do blast acts. You're right. Thank you. Uh, I meant blast them to begin with. I don't know why I even bothered to change it. Anyway, um, if I hit submit, it will search, uh, fairly quickly. It should come back pretty quickly. And if I want to see this result in JBrowse, so this is a blast result. If I want to see one of these results in JBrowse, I can click uh, on that link and it will actually, it will load it up. And I haven't tested this in probably a couple of years. <laughs> so hopefully it'll work. Uh, but yeah, so it gives me this track called hits um, where basically, huh, that's interesting. That should really kind of line up there and it does not, I don't know why. That makes me a little concerned. Oh, because I actually selected the intron. That's right. I forgot I did that. Uh, if you saw me when I clicked on it real quick, see there, it's an intron, which is why. So it does, Blast works just fine. <laughs> it found the intron uh, in this gene. So that's good. Um, and it looks like there's probably a continuation of this, this result somewhere else that goes way off to the left of the screen. But anyway, um, so yeah, so that you, that's uh, how you can search for sequence using basically BLAST or BLAT at WormBase and then visualize them in JBrowse. Scott, you can also, um, you can also use the sequence um, search feature, right? The file, the file sequence. Yeah. It, if it's a small enough sequence, you can, it'll come up. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, if, if it is small enough. So for instance, uh, I did do an example of that. So if I do the sequence search track, I don't know if the sequence that I just copied will be short enough, but we can try it and see what happens. Uh, <laughs> the, long label. That is a very long label. Let me hide that label. Uh, and then it, it, it did actually work. So, so this was a, I don't know how long it was. Um, Let's see. 
let me come back here. It's uh, 447 base pairs long. That's actually not too bad. Uh, I'm actually kind of surprised that it did that. That's actually quite good that it did it that quickly. So that's nice. Um, so yeah, it found that sequence uh, very fast. Um, and so again, just like all the other sequence search tracks, it'll do the same thing. This will stick around forever, although I don't imagine I'll find that intron anywhere else in the uh, worm genome. So, okay. Thank you, Scott and Chris. So, uh, Vinkata, I asked you in the chat if this answers your question. You can reply there. Um, great. She said yes. Um, another question from Venkata, she's asking how to compare two different sets of sequence data of N2 and the mutant uh, gene variation. I think uh, Scott showed the comparison for SARS-CoV-2 sequences. Um, Scott, did you want to show also um, N2 and the mutant or Venkata did this answered your question? That's, that's, that's actually, um, so that's kind of a, a it sounds like that's a more difficult problem. So, so doing the actual comparison of the sequences. So, so uh, if you've already done the comparison and you say have a list of variants, um, certainly the easiest thing to do is to get that into a VCF format. Um, and then you can load it into, uh, if the variants are relative to N2, you can load it into the N2 uh, JBrowse instance. I, um, uh, like I did uh, here. Um, yeah, so this so this track here when I when I did the um, open track file and I pasted in here the URL for um, the VCF file that I got from uh, AGR. Um, you could do the same thing, or if you have it on your own computer, you could do select files and select the VCF file and and its tabix tabix index, and it will show you that. Um, but if the problem is how to do the analysis to actually get the variants. Uh, I don't know the answer to that because it's not the sort of thing I do. Um, but uh, but I'm sure there's somebody in Wormbase that can help with doing that sort of thing. It's just I'm not the right guy. Thank you, Scott. Uh, moving on, we had a question from Hinam. Is there a way to search the CRISPR single guide RNA prediction to show some limited ranges in GC content and folding energy values? There is not, unfortunately. Um, so uh, what would be really nice, and it's one of the things I'm thinking about for when I implement JBrowse 2, is it will have much better kind of filtering uh, options. And so I think for a track like, uh, a track like this, um, it will be really nice if, um, uh, yeah, if you could put in a filter and say, only show me GC content between these ranges, and it would filter out the rest of them. So right now, the only real option is to just mouse over them and just keep your eye on the, the GC uh, part of the display. Um, th that, you know, the, the only thing that makes that kind of okay is presumably most of the time when you want to do uh, CRISPR, it's probably in a, a fairly narrow region. So you, you would just have to mouse over a few things uh, or a few dozen maybe uh, to kind of get an idea of what options are available. That, but that's, for the moment, that's the best you can do. Sorry. Okay, thank you. And then Matthew uh, has a suggestion. He says, please add circles and SD inspector split view features from JBrowse 2 ASA. <laughs> it's almost like, it's like he, um, uh, I, I did not put him in the audience to ask that question. No, that, that, is, um, that is something that I'm very excited about adding uh, from Jay Browns too. Um, and actually, I guess I can mention that, that the thing that I'm working on uh, kind of right now, uh, basically Jay Browns 2 was literally just released last week. And um, I would say it's not quite fully baked. There's functionality that's, uh, that we really need at Wormbase that isn't available yet. Um, but uh, one of the things that I have started working on is taking the uh, Synteny data that we have at Wormbase and putting it into JBrowse 2 because I think there'll be a much more useful user interface for looking at Synteny data. So basically we have uh, uh, Synteny data between C. elegans and, and a few other species like Briggsy. Um, I forget which other, there's a few, there's like three or four uh, species, five. Uh, that we have Synteny data between. And so I'm actually working right now on implementing that in JBrowse 2, uh, which will provide kind of like that Circos 
uh, display as well as kind of what you have in, in the, the G browse Centony viewer that you know the, the trapezoids between uh, between the species. So I'm really looking forward to that. I think that'll be really neat, uh, but it's not ready yet. Great, thank you. Uh, we don't have um, other questions. Um, so you still have time, five minutes time. Uh, Scott is here. Uh, take advantage of him <laughs> while he's available. Um, maybe Scott, I'll ask you something that users has asked us before. Uh, so if I use a gbrowse image, uh, how can I cite it in my paper? And uh, we do have a how to cite uh, WormBase uh, on the WormBase homepage. So that would be a good way to cite your GBrowse images. And uh, as Scott said, the uh, SDGs will be downloadable and editable in, um, uh, in the future in JBrowse as well. Um, and another question that we, uh, we got from users is how long will GBrowse will still be supported, Scott? I have no plans to get rid of it. Um, yeah, so, so basically it, it, um, it is running on, on a machine that we have in, in, encased in glass so that nothing will happen to it. Um, and so hopefully it will stick around forever. Um, installing GBrowse is not as easy as one would hope because it's pretty old software at this point. Um, so hopefully the GBrowse instance that we have running for worm base will stick around for a while. Um, it is not particularly difficult for me to maintain uh, going from one release to the next. So I don't anticipate getting rid of it anytime soon. Um, on the other hand, uh, when we bring new data in, it generally doesn't make it into GBrowse because um, while it's easy to maintain, you know, kind of easy to go from release to release, adding new data does take a fair amount of time. So unless there was a compelling reason, I probably wouldn't add uh, new data that comes along, meaning not meaning new data, uh, meaning new data types. So if there's a new gene that will make it into JBrowse or GBrowse, excuse me. But if there's like a new data type, a new track that typically will not make it into GBrowse. Great, thank you. It seems we have time only for one last question from Elizabeth. Um, you mentioned that sequence feature viewer might give incorrect sequence. How can you check that the sequence is correct? Yeah, that, that is a tricky one. Um, so I guess what I would do, um, so th things you could do to spot check, uh, uh, because that might, you know, if you say, well, if I compare, you know, multiple things uh, and, and they're the same, that would be great. So things that you could do uh, if, you're, uh, if you really need to make sure that this is really what, uh, uh, what you want is if I, on a, let's say on a gene feature, if I do the view details, if I click on that instead of the view sequence, I get this display, okay? And so basically what this does, it gives me the sequence for the whole gene here, and then it starts listing sub features. And so it lists the sequence for each one of the transcripts. So there's three transcripts in this gene, it shows me those three. And then at the bottom of each one of these transcripts, it says, uh, there's a button that says show sub features. So if I click on that for this one, it now shows me the exons and the UTRs, all the annotated things. And it gives me those sequences as well. So say I could say, well, let me look at, because usually what it would get wrong, if it gets things wrong, it gets boundaries wrong. Uh, so I could say, well, let me look at, here's an annotated exon and the beginning of it is A, T, C, G, G, A, A. Okay, and then I can compare that to what I got from the sequence feature viewer. Um, and then I could do the same thing at the end. And if I do that for a few of them, then uh, chances are it uh, will get them right. I think my recollection is, and, and maybe Chris will correct me if I'm wrong, but my recollection is, is that it frequently get wrong um, uh, displaying uh, UTRs sometimes um, or like, the first or second exon, it will just miss altogether. Yeah, I, um, I, I assessed this pretty thoroughly recently. It's just a handful of things, but we should probably make that um, clear somewhere in documentation. I yeah. think it's the ex, it, it's looking at exons and uh, and UTRs is sometimes problematic in the highlighting. Okay. Um, but uh, everything else works fine. You just need to know which one it is. Okay. Th uh, thank you for actually, uh, uh, yeah, because this is something actually Chris and I have been talking about 
uh, over the last, uh, I don't know, month or two, um, a lot. Uh, so anyway, yeah, so that's, uh, yeah. So I guess if, if I were using the sequence feature viewer, I would suggest using CDS and UTRs because I think it pretty much always gets those right. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think we should um, hand it back to Ranjana because uh, we're run out of time. Um, thanks, Scott. Ranjana? Yeah, uh, thank you, Scott, for a great uh, demo. Uh, I guess we broke a centuries old uh, rule, right, that a demo never works with an audience. So that's great. Um, Thank you, Daniela, for moderating the uh, chat, handling the Q&A session. I just want to um, remind users that we have at least six more webinars coming um, all the way until March 2021. So do remember to sign up um, for them on a range. You know, we have a range of topics um, related to worm-based data mining tools, um, et cetera. So again, thank you all for coming. It was really a pleasure to have you all here and we look forward to uh, meeting you again in, the, in, in our very next webinar. Do watch the blog on Wormbase because we will post um, uh, reminders and uh, dates and times for the upcoming webinars. Thank you. Bye. Bye.